What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bryce, and today I'm going to be in chapter 14 of the Parker Inheritance. Let's get it. I mean, let's begin. Chapter 14. Candace woke up on Saturday morning into the most wonderful smell, frying bacon. Her dad was probably fixing his famous blueberry pancakes as well. Even now, he liked to make the pancakes in the shapes. Hearts for Candace and stars for her mom. Candace wasn't naive. She had studied the statistics and done the research. She knew her parents weren't getting back together. Still, she liked having both of them around. That is, when they weren't fighting. If one was busy, the other was there to listen as she rambled about her day or helped her with her homework or whatever. And unlike her mother, her dad could throw down in the kitchen. She glanced at her father's laptop sitting on the nightstand. She had brought it to her room with the intention of searching for James Parker, but it hadn't felt right to take the next step without Brandon. She decided she'd give him until the afternoon to talk to her, and then she'd start back on the hunt, with or without him. She kicked off her sheets and headed to the bathroom, but the murmur of her parents' voices pulled her down the hallway toward the kitchen. She crept to the edge of the hallway and pressed herself against the wall. It sounded like they were standing by the stove, but she didn't dare peek around the corner to find out. I'm just saying, Candace doesn't need to be biking around a new city with a boy she barely knows, her father said. She's 12, exactly. She needs to be around other kids, other girls. Seriously, Joe, that's the stance you're taking? The frying sound increased. Her father must have had added more bacon to the pan. She's a baby, Anne, and she's not happy. I've been thinking, maybe she should come back to Atlanta with me. Candace's heart welled up inside her. Finally, he wanted her there after all. I can cut down on my travel for the next month, her father continued. And if I convert the spare, God, won't you ever stop lying to yourself? Language, her father said. He didn't like it when her mother used the Lord's name in vain. We both know your schedule isn't the reason she's not staying with you, or is Danielle no longer living at your apartment? Candace sucked in her breath. Danielle, is that what she said? It was hard to hear over the frying. Her father said something, but he was talking too low. And honestly, Candace didn't want to hear it. She crept away from the kitchen, then made a big production of entering the bathroom and slamming the door shut. She turned on the water to drown out all the noise in her head. Danielle, who was Danielle? Had her dad ask if her mom was dating because he was seeing someone as well. And since, when did he think it was okay to live with someone before getting married? Like, who does it? When Candace entered the kitchen... Her parents were sitting at the table, all smiles. Bacon and pancakes sat on the table between them. Hope you're hungry, her father. Hope you're hungry, her father said. We've got a long day ahead of us. Candace sat down and stared at the platter. She counted six heart-shaped pancakes. There were no stars. During breakfast, her dad brought up buying a new laptop for Candace. Her Mother reiterated that she wanted to wait until the end of the summer to get one, but her father wasn't having it. He and Candace then spent the rest of the morning and early afternoon driving to every electronics store in Lambert before finally purchasing a new top-of-the-line laptop. After grabbing a bite to eat, Candace's dad had offered to take her clothes shopping, but she quickly declined. She still owned a closet full of hideous neon t-shirts and shorts from their last shopping trip, so she instead redirected them to a bookstore. They browsed for a few hours before picking up two new puzzle books for Candace. She also did a quick check for the of the local history show before they left, hoping to find something about the Washingtons or the Allens, but she didn't see any books related to them. During their day out, she waited at each stop for her father to bring up Danielle. But as they turned into the neighborhood, into their neighborhood, Candace accepted that her father had no intention of discussing her. You're mighty quiet over there, he said. What's on your mind? 
Now was her chance. She opened her mouth and paused. Candy? Her father frowned. What is it? She sighed as much as she wanted to, as she couldn't bring herself to ask about Danielle. The day had gone really well, and she didn't want to say or hear anything that would mess that up. So instead, she said, did you know Grandma was fired from her job here? That was a long time ago. Her father looked at her. Why are you asking? If someone's been talking down about your grandmother, tell me, and I'll, Dad, is fine. I just wish I had known. Your mother didn't like to talk about it, he said. Neither did your grandma. I bet that's why she never told, never sold the house here. She probably had it in her head that she was coming back to dig up the rest of the city. He slowed as he turned on the street. It would really be something if they were ever found that treasure of hers. He's, she sat up, pushing against her seatbelt. So you believe she was right? No, it's too outlandish to be true. But as she liked to say, just because you don't see the path doesn't mean it's not there. Find the path, solve the puzzle. Candace touched the bracelet. You still have that old thing? He laughed. <laughs> there was a while there. There was a while there that you never take it off. Even when you were sleeping or taking a bath, he let it go of steering the wheel. Of the steer, he let go of the steering wheel long enough to pull Candace's ponytail. Your grandmother and I didn't always see eye to eye, but I still loved her, flaws, claws, and all. And she loved you more than anyone else in the world. Candace thought back to the night her grandmother had given her her, her the bracelet. It was right before Candace was to perform in a big Christmas play at church. For a look, her grandmother had whispered, slipping, slipping it onto her wrist. Her father had tried to stop her, saying that shepherds didn't wear jewelry. Grandmother had rolled her eyes. Grandma had rolled her eyes and replied. And when's the last time you met a shepherd, Joe? Candace had tried to return the bracelet after the play, but her grandmother had refused, saying it looked better on Candace. Candace smiled and ran her fingers along the metal, just as she said, just as she had during the play. It touched calm it touched calm her down as much as that back then. As they pulled into the driveway, Candace saw Brandon on his porch reading a book. By the time they got out of the truck, he was walking across the street. Brandon, I presume, her father whispered. Candace nodded. Brandon offered a small wave as he reached their driveway. Hey, he said. I looked for you earlier. We went shopping, she said. Laptop and books. I'm Joe Miller, Candy's father. Her dad stepped forward and shook Brandon's hand. Brandon flexed his fingers as he turned to Candace. I can come back if you're busy. No, what's up? Candace asked. Please don't say anything about the letter, she thought. Tori went through her things and found some clothes she thought might fit you. He said, she said to come over any time to pick them up. Can I run over? She asked her father. Now would be the perfect time to take a quick look at the DVD. Her father scratched his beard. Um, I don't know. Go ahead. Her mother said from behind her. Candace hadn't realized her mom had stepped outside, but not too long. Maybe an hour? But it won't take that long, Candace said. No, an hour is fine. Your father and I need to finish out talk, our talk from this morning. Um, okay, the air suddenly seemed too thick. Everything felt wrong. She wondered if Brennan could sense it as well. Let me run these inside, she said, holding up her bags. Her father reached for them. I can take these in for, no, it's okay. Candace was already heading to the door. Be back in a sec. And that was chapter 14. So tomorrow I'll be reading chapter 15. And uh, that's about it. Peace out.